Change plans yet again. And the day is not even, well, I guess the day has started. Started with a little Qigong and then a little jump over the fence to get out of here. We sit at the bus stop, chat with some locals, get some misinformation, jump back over the fence, walk back upstairs and uh, eat some delicious breakfast. Gabriel has cooked breakfast. He made a lot, so I'm glad I showed up. And uh, I'm gonna borrow a car from Fritz. Thank you so much, Fritz. And drive to Uvita and go uh, see about these rad pads down there. Looks like an amazing project we'd love to be a part of. So I'm going to do that. Gabriel's going down to the other place. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see how it goes. All right, down at the site. Buenos dias, Pura Vida. Looking good down there. They got the holes all dug. Uh, bend the metal up here. It's looking nice. It's gonna be each pillar. Yeah. Looking very, very nice. So the guys are all working hard. It's going really well. We've got uh, the metal, the three by threes all here which we learned about three by three is not being exactly three by three and that makes everything exactly challenging. But that's what we like is uh, to focus on the solution. So Gabriel has found a solution. So we measure everything to the millimeter and never make anything more than two millimeter of variance. Um, but now we have two millimeter of variance on the size of the product, the material that we're buying. So that makes it uh, pretty interesting where some of this three by three is like almost an eighth of an inch smaller uh, than some of the others. And it's pretty random. And we've tried a couple different suppliers and we've come to uh, acceptance and we're gonna work within that as one of the parameters. But that up there is the jig, so that makes the ease, the wall panels. Uh, it went pretty well. He just fits it in the middle of the jig and it seems to be very good, I would have to say. The saw is working out perfectly. Um, the little welder we brought is great, and we found another welder available. Um, it's quite a bit more expensive, but a much more robust machine, so we'll probably purchase that on, on the, next, um, the next rad pad, which I'm going down to today to go check out. Um, and if everything lines up and it works well, look at Gabriel's welds, man. He's getting so freaking good. Look at that. That is a beautiful weld right there. Wow, he's doing awesome. So, yeah, today looks like another day of progress and we're right on schedule in Costa Rica. I'm driving from Paradise Lodge up by the big waterfall. I've uh, just passed Dominical, which is a really cool spot. And now I'm cruising along the beach. It's basically the Pacific coast of Costa Rica. Um, Paradise Lodge was gracious enough to allow me to use their vehicle. And I'm going into Uvita, uh, which is another beautiful place. I just wanted to take a second to acknowledge the difference between Costa Rica and Nicaragua. So in Nicaragua is where we developed the rad pad building system out of you know, uh, readily available materials utilizing uh, shade, airflow, and drainage um, out of a necessity uh, because of the limited amount of resources there in Nicaragua. So now we've taken that mindset here into Costa Rica where there are so many more resources um, that it's almost making it like easy. It's actually easy here in Costa Rica to achieve what we had worked so hard to be able to achieve in Nicaragua. Now, the big difference here, not only the roads are amazing, um, is the amount of prospects, the amount of people that are looking for houses, um, and not just houses to live in. A lot of people are looking for investments here. Uh, and not the type of investment in Nicaragua people look for investments and then they uh, hold it for a period of time and and the investment is on the land value increase um, whereas here it's rental income so I think we've we've talked with enough people here now and we see the magic code and the magic is build for under 50,000 
and rent for $700 a month in a one large one bedroom or a small two bedroom uh, and make it appeal to the expats. Uh, it's a 100% market of expats living in these um, short-term, long-term rentals. And we've now gone through the amount of work uh, involved in the short term, even though it seems um, it seems very lucrative when you look at the numbers, when you dive in the short term rental, it's a lot of work uh, in the management department and the customer acquisition uh, is quite costly. So uh, what the locals have been doing is using their land as the main asset and subdividing it and almost trading land for services um, to be able to get houses built at that under $50,000 mark where the ROI, the yearly ROI on that is pretty fantastic. The challenge that they're having is getting construction completed. Uh, many of these people I've spoken to that have, have cracked the code and they have four or five or even six um, two bedroom apartment, or not apartments, uh, rental houses. Uh, where they've subdivided property or acquired little pieces all over town and they've built these houses, these $50,000 two bedroom houses, is the time it takes them to build it. So they're, they have, you know, what I would call unfair advantages, which are necessary in business. And unfair advantages is like uh, one brother owns the hardware shop, so they get, you know, uh, supplies at cost. Uh, one brother owns uh, a masonry place, so they do all the brickwork and block and foundation. One guy does the uh, cement and they have all the trades necessary, so they kind of all do it for cost, but they all drop the project when they get a paying client. Um, so the time that they take to build the house is sometimes upwards of two years is what I've heard. And that's because they're, they're building it at 50K, which you and I, if we were to build it, uh, would probably cost us 100 or 75. Um, and then it gets out of that sweet spot for the rental. Then you have to rent it out for 1,000 to 1,500 a month, which is much harder to acquire and keep uh, a tenant at $1,500 a month as it is at that $700 mark. So what Radpad's done is we've found a way to build a house um, quickly, super quickly. And I think that is becoming our biggest asset um, out of readily available materials um, that's utilizing the resourcefulness that we've, you know, uh, developed up in Nicaragua down here. So we're able to build a house for 50K that is so modern and hip and cool that it has the appeal to the target uh, market, which is expats uh, with $700 a month uh, disposable rental income. So it looks like we're just gonna go over here and kill it. And we're headed into Uvita today um, with a lady that wants two of them uh, because she sees, she's like under 50K and you can build it in a couple months. My, my, uh, I get my property starting to give me a return. And uh, that's what we're in the business of. So I'm going to check it out right now. So this is the property. It is Uvita Central. So really centrally located. Uh, right between the river, right behind me is the river, and this is the gated area, so it's fully fenced in. Um, quite a bit of space, uh, and this creative space here, so there's already a roof in place, and it's about, it looks like five meters and six meters, so about maybe a little less than five there. So it's about 10 or 11 meters wide, uh, and the idea is to use the back section she has drawings and everything for a big house to go in here. It was gonna be an L-shaped house going down here and along the backside with a covered patio right here uh, and out into here where she would do some more jungly type of stuff. Um, but after discussion, what we're thinking is this back area here, which is uh, 11 meters uh, right here, this back area. And it's about five meters from post to post. So this area here, we put a rad pad. It would kind of have a little backyard here. We'd church it up. Um, and then out here, we might be able to fit um, 
one, two, three, four more rad pads, like the hotel version ones, the three meter by five meters. Um, and then back here, this would be a four meter by 10 meter full rad pad. Um, and we're talking about doing a different roof, keeping the same ceiling, but since there's already a roof, I think we can just incorporate the structure or build a rad pad here and not even touch the structure, but use it for the shade and the drainage and the airflow. Um, so that is the opportunity and we're going to try and price this one out. It's going to be interesting because, um, we're not going to be needing the second roof and the flooring could be quite different. I don't think we need to do a poured cement raised floor here. We might even be able to do uh, on grade, on slab. So we'll price it out and then we'll find out if this is our next build in Costa Rica. It's a clear difference between Nicaragua and Costa Rica. Uh, I rolled into this coffee shop and I ordered a cafe con leche. Cafe con leche in Nicaragua consists of coffee, presto, poured into hot milk, stirred up and given to you. And it's like 14 Cordobas. I don't know what this is, but this is a French press with coffee in it and hot milk and then water. Sweet jar. And the branding, absolutely awesome. Even when you drink, boom. I don't know if you can see that, but you're branded again. The marketing in Costa Rica it's far superior to that of the marketing in Nicaragua, in my humble experience. Wow, you can just feel it down here. It's amazing. That's where you're going to be sitting in a rad pad. So we've got it uh, dug out. The holes are there exactly where they're supposed to be. So we've got six holes for the footings. Uh, the rad pad will sit level with this top string here going out way up high out there. So it's like almost, almost four meters off the back end and you're just gonna be floating in, um, in the jungle. And in the rainy season, the water's flowing down there. It's gonna be amazing. So our next challenge is to build stairs up this. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no problem. We got it. Update time, Gabriel. Uh, well, I cut all the three by threes and welded it all the E's together, mm -hmm. the wall units. It turned out better, much better than I thought. I freaked out for a couple of days <laughs> because I, I tend to do that sometimes. Yeah. But uh, first shot. I have to say, hold on, you're looking very piratish today. Piratish, so thank you. Yes, very piratey. All right, and now that that's been announced, go ahead. Like I was saying, boom, did a millimeter. Yeah? Yeah, it turned out very well. Fantastic. What else? Um, num, num, num. It's a hot day. I'm... It's hot. Oh, I'm thank God sweating. for that tent. Yeah, yeah. That's and... a nice tent you have there. You pitch a nice tent. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Like, like pirates do. Uh, pirate tent. So this is the jig for making all the wall panels. All the wall panels are neatly stacked over there for Fritz's sweet new rad pad. What do you got to say, Gabriel? I gotta give Gabriel credit for this system. <coughs> Laying out the uh, ease. These are all the wall panels for the rad pad. And this way you can paint all the welds. Brrr, 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 really quick. And then we flip them over to the other side and get the other side of the welds. Then everything is ready in case we get some Costa Rica weather or it just might start raining. The floor frame is coming together perfectly. So we've got a floor and a ceiling frame there. There's one divider in there about a, a we call it an EN from the EZE system. One meter in about 
That'll divide the bathroom section from the bedroom section of the Airbnb unit. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of one by two that'll go on as the floor. Uh, then we're using that plastic recycled bamboo wood flooring that'll go on there. It'll be amazing. And then inside each one of these E's, uh, the panels, whether it be windows or the plastic wood, will go in. And a sweet queen size bed, a mirror, and a bathroom. And maybe a little chest for your clothes, but just try and make it the ultimate Airbnb experience. And this will be one unit, and it'll go off the side of that cliff over there. And then we'll do more and more. There's cliffs for days here that we can build rad pads on. So these are the columns that are gonna go uh, in the ground. There's gonna be two of these tall in the front and then one tall in the back. And these uh, rebar towers go inside. So they have like little feet on the bottom that, that go into the big, you, you pour like a big puddle of concrete in the bottom of the hole, stick this in, then put this tube, concrete tube over the top of it and then fill it all with concrete up there and then on the top of them, there'll be metal caps. And that's where we'll weld the three by three that'll go up high to where the rad pad will be. And it's like, I mean, the goal is to be number one, baby. Number one on TripAdvisor and number one on Airbnb. <laughs> the raddest experience ever. So uh, they're building the walkway in now. Um, we might do in some metal stairs and stuff, but it connects from there and you go way down into the jungle and you're suspended in the air in the canopy. So you're like right below the canopy. So the view down there, you can see the whole jungle and they, they own 20 hectares here. So it's a lot of land, a private land. There's waterfalls down there. Uh, there's hiking trails that go to different waterfalls and amazing points, uh, viewpoints. Uh, it's gonna be something super special. That's what we're building, something rad. All of the E's have been perfectly made, well, progressly made. <laughs> Everyone is so freaking good, it's ridiculous. They're like, it's two millimeters off. It's not, it's like one millimeter off, the worst one. Uh, the rest of them are spot on perfect. Uh, even though the material, you know, that we're able to get is not perfect. Uh, Gabriel's been able to make it all work and build systems so that other people can make it all work while he's doing other things. But he's just finishing up the welds. This is the, uh, it's exciting because you actually get to see how big the unit is. So this is the hotel unit and it'll be suspended up in the air in the jungle. And it'll be basically one E, uh, the easy E system. That's the wall panels that clip together. So it's five wall panels long and uh, three wall panels wide. And there's basically a door over here and then an interior wall right here that will have a shower, a sink, and a toilet here with that one wall there. And that's about a meter, so one by three meter bathroom. And then you have a three meter by four meter bedroom with a queen size bed and windows all around, bug screens, super bug free, tall ceilings, double roof, super cool, extra rad, floating in the jungle of Costa Rica, dream come true. Oh, they're kissing, I got it on video. I got it on video. Oh, he just fed her a snack. That's awesome. Yes. We came here because there's a lot more traffic and prospects in Costa Rica, but it's also very loud when the trucks drive by. It's hard to tell what's going on. Oh, shit. It's just so loud. I said it's so loud. Yeah, so many people. It's like rush hour.